Hello and welcome to another 15 minutes with your Bible. Let's pray. Our Father which art in heaven, thank you so much for the opportunity to open your word once again. Please be with us now as we study. Open up, open up our minds and hearts and help us to just use these moments to concentrate on your goodness and your love, to listen to your word and to be more like you, now and always. In the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. We're still doing Bible reading. And we're on chapter 1. Under the subheading, The Life-Giving Word. The next question is, What did Jesus declare himself to be in John 6, verse 35? John 6. Verse 35. What did Jesus declare himself to be? And it reads, And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never thirst. That's John 6, 35. So he said to us that he is the bread of life. Now if Jesus is the bread of life, what should we do with this bread? Verses 57 and 58 of John 6 tells us what we should do with this bread. 57 and 58. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. The importance of God's word cannot be underestimated. We need to eat this bread daily. Just as the living Father sent me, I live because of the Father. So the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your forefathers ate manna and died, but he who feeds on this bread will live forever. So the answer to the question, what should we do with this bread, is to feed on the bread that we would live forever and that means studying and reading and meditating and concentrating on the word daily if you ate dinner today you're not going to wait another six weeks to eat dinner again so the same way how you take in physical food you need to take in spiritual food regularly the next question is what did Jesus really mean by our eating his flesh and that can be f the answer to that can be found in John 6, verse 63. What did Jesus mean by us eating him, his flesh? Verse 63 reads, It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. So, when Jesus told us to eat his flesh, he meant his spiritual words were to be taken in so that we can feed our spiritual bodies and that taking in those words would give us life. We clearly understand that to eat the flesh of the Son of God is to live by his word. What grand privilege do we have as Christians? What grand privilege do we have as Christians? Hebrews 6, 5. And have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come. So as Christians, we have the privilege to taste 
the good word of God and that's found in Hebrews 6 verse 5 you can also look up a reference in Jeremiah 15 16 now the next question is what glorious invitation is extended to all Psalms 34 8 Psalm 34, 8 reads, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. So we are invited to taste and see that the Lord is good. How are we instructed to pray for both physical and spiritual nourishment? Matthew 6, 11. Matthew 6:11 gives us instructions on on how to pray for both physical and spiritual nourishment. Matthew 6:11 reads, "Give us this day our daily bread." A lot of times we say that prayer and we think that he's talking about physical food. He's talking about the word of God, the bread of life. When the Word became flesh, this is a notation, and made His dwelling among us, John 1.14, the thought of God was revealed in human flesh. When the Bible writers spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, as found in 2 Peter 1.21, the thought of God was revealed in human language. The union of the divine and human in Jesus is declared to be the mystery of godliness 1 Timothy 3.16 and there is the same mystery in the union of divine thought and human language the two revelations of God in human flesh and in human speech are both called the word of God and both are the word of life those who fail to find Christ in the scriptures will not be able to receive the power God seeks to give each of us the next subheading is Christ in all the Bible. Of whom did Jesus say the scriptures testify? The answer to that can be found in John 5 verse 39. John 5 verse 39. And it reads, You search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life, and these are they which testify of me. So the question again, of whom did Jesus say the scriptures testify? He said that they testify of him. Search, this is a notation, search the Old Testament scriptures, scriptures for they that testify of Christ. To find him in them is the true and legitimate end of their study. To be able to interpret them as he interpreted them is the best result of all biblical learning. Dean Alford Of whom did Moses and the prophets write? John 1.45 of whom did Moses and the prophets write? John 1 45. John 1 45 reads Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Moses and the prophets wrote about Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. How did Jesus show that all the scriptures testify of him? Verse 27, Luke 24, 27. <clears throat> Verse 27 reads, And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, 
he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So here we, we continually see that the entire Bible points right back to Jesus. The next question is, where in the Bible do we find the first promise of a Redeemer? The answer to that can be found in Genesis 3, 14 and 15. Where in the Bible do we find the first promise of a Redeemer? Genesis 3, 14 and 15. And it reads, So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life and I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel here's a notation after Adam and Eve sinned in the garden of Eden God pronounced curses including one on the serpent which represented Satan and it was back then that he gave us the promise of a redeemer when he said I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers he will crush your head and you will strike his heel now in what words was this promise renewed to Abraham Genesis 22:18 The promise was renewed to Abraham in these words. In your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. You can also find a reference to that in Genesis 26, 4 and Genesis 28, 14. Let's read Genesis 28, 14. Genesis 28:14 reads Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth you shall spread abroad to the west and the east to the north and the south and in you and in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed Who was the rock that spiritually fed the Israelites during their wilderness journey. 1 Corinthians 10, 3 and 4. First Corinthians 10, 3 and 4 reads, all ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ so the rock that spiritually fed the Israelites during their wilderness journey was Christ the rock was Christ Here's a notation. The face in the puzzle picture. Did you ever see one of those 3D puzzle pictures that conceal a portrait or landscape? At first it appears to be a meaningless chaos, but suddenly the pattern appears and you wonder why you had not seen it before. The great face in the Bible is that of Jesus. Like the scarlet thread that runs through every inch of rope in the British Navy, like the melody of a beautiful song, like the theme of a great masterpiece, so is Jesus in the scriptures. They testify of him. He is the author and the hero, the beginning and the end of your Holy Bible. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.